Hello and welcome to the Chop It Up Podcast, the show that's unfiltered and unapologetic. Each episode will bring you closer to finding your purpose. And for our loyal listeners, a special surprise awaits you at the end. Be sure to listen all the way through. Now, here's your host, Carmisha Superville. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Chop It Up Podcast. How are my people doing? How y'all doing? Listen, first and foremost, we just want to thank all our listeners. You guys, I love you so much. And we actually just got the numbers in. Thank you, Spotify. (laughs) We just got the numbers in. And we are so honored that so many of you all are downloading our podcast. We have dedicated listeners. Thank y'all so much. Listen, you guys have been such great um, co-hosts that we have amazing gifts because it is the holiday season. So we have amazing um, giveaways at the end of the podcast. So make sure you listen all the way through because we have some really exciting gifts for our dedicated listeners. Thank y'all so much again. Y'all already know who it is. My name is Kamisha, host of the Chop It Up podcast. Today's episode is entitled how to be a positive role model, how to be a positive role model, especially as we go into the holidays and we think about the new years, right? We have to think about how can we add to our community? How can we add to our families' lives, right? How can we add to our kids, uh, you know, our um, partners? How can we be positive in the middle of things that may be heavy, So I am so honored to be joined by someone that I think is a great example of that. Um, I will be, uh, we'll be listening or speaking to the CEO and founder, Michael Miller. He is the owner of Nambari. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes. All right. Michael, welcome to Chop It Up. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for availing yourself. Um, I know you're super busy. I know we spoke and you actually are going heading out of town. So thank you so much for just taking time or making the time to speak with us. So Michael, we are speaking about positive role models and being that you're a man, um, how, how that has contributed to you being a father, whether good, bad, or indifferent, right? So we're going to have that conversation. You ready to chop it up? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, tell first and foremost, let's pronounce the clothing line um, properly. How do you pronounce it? Nambari, just like you said it. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And what I love about it, I was kind of list- I was kind of reading the backstory of it, and I love the fact that it's very mission focused and mission driven. Like I know there's um a, um a community aspect to your brand. So tell us about that. How did that start? Um, the brand actually started uh, when I was a teenager. My brother actually, uh, we all went to get tattoos and my brother actually, uh, out of a tattoo book, kind of remade uh, a sun image, which was the logo that we have now. But at that time, we weren't really thinking about businesses or anything like that. It was just like a nice fancy tattoo. But as time went on, we kind of did like uh, some test mock-up t-shirts, some car decals, things like that. And then a lot of people came up and was questioning, oh, what's that logo? You know, taking pictures of it and things like that. So when we were getting that attention, we said maybe we should trademark this and kind of make sure that this is ours to build something in the future. So we did that years uh, down the line. The name Nambari came up because we wanted something that actually means number in Swahili. So uh, we know we believe that, you know, in numbers, anything is possible, giving back to a good community, things of that nature. So we wanted to kind of intertwine the image that we had from years ago and also with a unique name uh, to kind of bring together. That's beautiful. That's amazing, man. And you said since you were a teen. So tell us about that. Who is the Michael Miller as a teenager? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Born and raised in Brooklyn, you know, so, you know, it's a local uh, I think it was a, yeah, BK, BK all day. <laughs> I think it was a, a mixture of, you know, focused books, learning, but then also, you know, mischievous, you know, uh, hanging out once in a while, but also being focused and also knowing the good crowds and the bad crowds. Because I think, you know, especially growing up, it's good to realize that and making sure that your circle is positive and going to put you in the right 
direction. But uh, for me, it was kind of like that. But, you know, just a mixture of everything, but making sure to stay focused to be uh, have better steps and options in the future. I love that. Give us a little bit of the mischievous side. Like, what were you used <laughs> to? Like, you know? Uh, the mischievous side. You, you know, we used to, uh, you know, we used to play like uh, tap, tap the can and, and like, you know, go jump off of roofs, climbs on roofs and things like that. Because you didn't want to kind of like, get caught or things like that so uh it was, we were a little crazy climbing things you know i kind of bust my head one time had to get stitches so uh, i've been through my bumps and bruises so now I'll just like be neutral now <laughs> right now you're just cruising <laughs> exactly exactly I, I, I love that why don't you not doing any like jeffrey diamond type of you know no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not down with that no 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 because you, know? <laughs> you know it starts when you're younger like yeah. those type of um kind of like um insidious uh behavioral patterns it starts when you're younger you know yeah this is true and that's why i said yeah. like it's good to have that good circle so i think once yeah. you have that good circle of good examples around you you you're used to that and you kind of build from that yeah that's amazing that's amazing so michael you know one thing i admire about your brand and about you especially and i think you wear your brand so well is that you're very attentive and you're very self-aware, very attentive, very self-aware. Tell us about that. Have you always been like that? Um, thank you, first of all. Um, and yes, um, I'm kind of a, we're kind of like strict with detail and making sure that all of our clients are satisfied. Uh, we have a great client, Mr. Handwash in Elmont, New York. Uh, he has a good car wash. Go down there, get your car wash. It's VIP. Um, and he has a good team there. And um, he believed in us and we were able to do several orders with him. So we basically, you know, <clears throat> with us, we have our own brand, just to be clear, right? Our own Lambari brand. But in addition to that, we also do customized work. Uh, so it's basically our uh, merchandise, but we're doing the customized or the customers or clients logo, uh, their information. So they can either use as promotions for themselves, um, you know, uniforms for their staff or something along those lines. So like even with... Um, with Chris over there, Mr. Handwash, we did a couple of orders for him. And then, you know, we had some issues here and there, but we made sure on our side that uh, we got those fakes to show him um, and their you know, whole staff that we're in uh, dedicated and not just, oh, we just placed an order with you and not, you know, never see you again. We're trying to build lasting relationships, uh, you know, with our clients here, just not like a one and done. So making sure that their experience is good, making sure that uh, they get the best premium quality products that we offer is our goal. And then kind of just branching off from there, because we believe if you take care of one, that one can turn to five and so on and so forth. That and is it's so actually true. doing that, so I think. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So growing up, in terms of this mindset that you have today, did it add to it? Like, kind of walk us through that self-awareness, that empathetic characteristics of, of you and what you embody. Walk us through that. Like, where did that start from? What was the catalyst that allowed you to be who you are today, if you can recall? Uh, yeah, I, I think growing up, like I said, you know, I've seen good, I've seen bad. Uh, I've lost friends, lost close people to me, but you kind of know that you don't want to go down that road. You want to kind of be more of a positive role model for yourself. Like you don't want to end up in a bad situation and also for your kids growing up and even for your family, right? Because you see one person, but you're representing your kids, your family, and, and, and so on and so forth. So with me, it's just a matter of seeing and realizing, because I think many people don't know, hey, this is not a good road to go down. Let me go over here. Some people are just kind of embedded in it and just kind of follow the crowd. But sometimes you can't always do that. Uh, so with me, it was just a matter of kind of knowing the difference and where to go and then just wanting better for myself. And then, you know, and I think one thing that I take away from that is, learning from other people's mistakes right because if i see someone jumping down a hill i know not to go that way if you don't see that and you don't realize that there's something that you have to learn from yourself so with me is just being around the certain uh, crowds and then also learning from other people's mistake as well as myself i, love so that. I think that kind of helped uh kind of uh, evolve into where we're at right now yeah i love that um, so we're talking about positive role model, and I really like that conversation, um, topic, especially because 
you know, there's a lot of heaviness, as I said at the top of the convo, that there's a lot of heaviness in our society right now. Um, and, you know, sometimes in urban communities, you know, we are blamed, we get blamed a lot, right? Um, and, and there are a lot of statistics that is attached to us. So in all of that said, how can you be a positive role model, whether you're a man or female? Like, what are the steps? Like, how can we be positive in an environment that sometimes is so negative, fosters neg negativity? Uh, I believe that being seen and being actually in the community helps. Because I think once the youth see their own and our own um, empowering them and doing good, right? Because somebody can see this and say, oh, wow, the guy's from Brooklyn. He has a clothing line. And that that itself can maybe motivate one of your followers, or one of your, you know, subscribers. It's one little thing that just makes the trigger, which is your catalyst, which kind of just brings you on to the next. Uh, so I think with that is just, it, it evolves. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's true. I, I agree. Definitely agree. I think also, you know, having this podcast, right? The reason why I wanted to, well, I started with a co-partner, um, but she has transitioned and, but I wanted to stick with it because it really highlights people in our community that's making an impact you know, professionals that's adding back, right? And I think it's so imperative. I think one of the things too, it's a, there's a lack. You know, a lot of us look up to celebrities and, you know, influencers, but we are the people, you are the person that's making a difference in our community every day. And I think that has add value and also been a positive light to shed, shed positivity on some of the, amazing things that comes out of our communities, you know? And I think this podcast has definitely shown that, you know? So let's talk a little bit about, is there anything, we're talking about childhood, right? And as we grow. So is there anything that you wish you had asked your parents, but you didn't? Is there anything that you wish you had asked your parents, but you didn't? I think, and I think it's a big topic today. I think financials, right? Um, and I, I, it's sad, but I think it's good that we at least know, have the tools now and the knowledge now to kind of do, you know, stocks and savings and grants and things of that nature. I think, you know, imagine you knowing all the information, you know, now as a, as a young teenager, how much money you would have invested or put aside, or maybe did with real estate, you know, like I, that one thing, I feel like that would have helped me been in a better position now, but you know, I feel like everything at the end of the day happens for a reason. And at least, you know, at this point, you know, the information, and if you have information now, and you're not using it, that's on you. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's one thing I kind of wish I would have had more information on, you know, with savings and being more financial and the real estate and things like that, because that does build to better uh, comfortable and, you know, living environment and also generational wealth as well. Financial literacy. Exactly. Gotcha. Are your parents still with us? Uh, my mother's still here, yeah. Okay. okay. She's uh she's now, you know, she did her years here in the city. She was a teacher. She retired. She's back home now in Costa Rica living it living it up. So, you know, the traveling back and forth. Cold weather, go to the nice. You know how it is. Come back when yeah. it's nicer here. So, uh I'm glad she did what she did and made the sacrifices for us, but you know, it's time for her to enjoy her life now as she Absolutely. wants it to be while she has the health, okay. thank God. Thank God. Yeah, of course. So, Michael, you speak a little Spanish. Hey, un poquitito, un poquitito. Oh, okay. Oh, como estas? Bien y tú, bien y tú. I get there, I get there. When I'm forced right. to, the Spanish comes out, you know? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, you know, it just comes out. Roll off the tongue. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I also have no. to mention, you know, I feel like we didn't we didn't give kudos to you and your team, you know, with that event at Restoration Plaza. I feel like it was a great eye opener. It was good for our vendors to connect. So just to say thanks for doing that. And then, you know, you didn't have to, but you did. And I think that was a great op opportunity for the youth, especially to see. And, and, you know, there's a difference. There's hope. You don't always have to be go down a negative road. And I feel like we said before is seeing it and being seeing in people face to face and hearing our different stories i feel that like it makes a huge difference especially for the youth 
and um, I can't wait for the next one. Absolutely, I agree. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being an integral part in the success of it. And speaking of that, right, speaking of the young people within our communities, good father, what is the definition of a good father? Before we even get there, I had to do some deep thinking, my dog on self, Michael, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> especially, especially when you challenged me and you was like, oh, we're going to talk about this. I was like, oh. <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> I had to think, um, because one thing about me, you know, when I am, and that's maybe my background in terms of being a planner, like I'm always planning. So even with the podcast, I just don't have a podcast to just have it. I don't yeah. just speak to just speak. If I'm speaking, it's going to be something of value, value yeah. right? And so I had to kind of think and research what does it mean to be a good father? What does it mean to be a good dad? And for me, in terms of my upbringing, though I didn't live in the household with my father, right, because he had married and he re got remarried, and obviously we had a blended family, but I started thinking about my experiences, especially as a woman, right, um, as a woman of color too, what was that experience like? Because so many times we hear the conversation of good father, right? Black fathers being absent from the household. Again, these silly stereo stereotypical conversations that goes nowhere. But I think about my dad and even though he was, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the same household with him. He was very much present in my life, you know? Um, and I think of how that relationship has flourished today. It wasn't always like that because a lot of times he used to get on my nerves and like just the grow <laughs> it's you normal, know, yeah. Yeah, the growing pains of being a teenager, right? As you're transitioning to womanhood. But I, I remember like being a teenager when I needed that guidance, when I really needed that voice of reasoning, a lot of times it wasn't there. And I don't know if it's because he worked a lot. He worked a lot. He had like three jobs. I didn't even oh, wow. notice. Yeah, I was talking to him recently. I was like, wait, what? You had three jobs. So he obviously wanted to provide for his family yeah. and obviously his extended family, but now the relationship is definitely better and we have a great communication. He makes me laugh and so forth. And he's very visible in my life and, and, and I'm grateful for that. But I start thinking, what is a good father? What is the definition of a good father, right? Being a good dad. So let's talk about that. What do you say? Yeah, I say, First of all, I would say that no one's ever prepared because they always say, hey, I'm prepared to be a father or a parent. I don't think no one's ever prepared for that. I don't think nothing prepares you for that. I think what prepares you for that is actually going through it <laughs> um, as you're going through the growing pains uh, to see you just have to meet those challenges. You know, it's nothing that could be taught out of a book. It's just as you go along with it, you're making the best decision, hopefully at that time. And I think, uh, and just making sure you're present, right? And then being vocal and listening and not just also, you know, demanding things out of them. It's a two-way street and you want to have a good relationship. You don't want it to be where, to me, I don't want to be your friend, right? We could be friends at times. I'm not your friend. I'm your parent. Uh, but, you know, just to have that cool, open relationship. And I feel like keeping uh, the lines of communication open is very important because you don't want them to feel sheltered where they can't talk to you about anything. You want to have 100% be an open book so you could talk about anything. But I think really just being present, uh, you know, uh, ceremonies, graduations, things like that, you want to be present, you want to be there, maybe vacations if possible, um, because whether you believe it or not, I'm sure you can, you have you may not remember all, but I'm sure you had these highlights of your life where you're like, I remember this, where my, my dad did this or my mom did this. And that's what, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you only have your memories and your word. There's nothing else. Michael, man, listen, you hit it right on the knob. I try. Let, <laughs> <laughs> Let me share this with my listeners. I'm going to share this with you. And I'm going to share this publicly. Uh-oh. I know my... I know my dad listened to my podcast because he be telling me, oh, you didn't say this. You didn't say this. So he going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it check out. it out. So I remember graduating from high school. And I've always been one that's vocal. 
the the Kamisha that you know now is the same Kamisha ten years ago. Like uh, I've always been vocal. That's one thing. That's that's my superpower. I didn't know. I didn't know it back then. But now I'm like, wow. But check it out though. My dad and I, we was having a conversation while I was getting ready for my high school graduation. Yeah. All right, Michael. So check it out, right? So you know, um, my family, everybody's in town. My mother's friend, everybody's getting ready to go. Da 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 da. We was organizing who's gonna go to the dinner because we had the graduation dinner. Yeah. Who's gonna go? Yo, I never forgot it. That's the reason why you said all we have is our memories. Ooh, when you said that, it put that plug like, oh my gosh, I remember this. Check it out though. My dad and I, he was traveling. So he had already moved out of the New York area. And I remember having a conversation with him. Again, me being vocal, me me being very much, um, I don't know. I just, you say what's on your mind, but I think I say also what's in my heart at the time. That's and good. I, yeah. And I said something that he didn't like. He, he did not approve of. And that was just my truth. Ooh. That was just my truth. You uh, remember, I'm still a young woman, teenager, you know, getting ready for, you know, the next chapter in my life after high school. So I said in that moment how I felt, yo, you know, that man got mad in his feelings and he didn't show up for my graduation. Wow. High school. Yo, son. Wow. Now the, Bro now the Brooklyn go come on, right? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And yo, that hurt me to my core. Wow, I didn't know see? how, I didn't know then how it hurt me, but like just reliving it, that hurt me. I was so disappointed wow. in him. And I told him about that years later. And you know, he's, he on some BS, like he ain't even really understanding. Like he like, oh, just but being present. It. Yeah, he was like, oh, you said this, or that hurt me, and that back and forth, and, and and his perspective and his stance was his stance, and my stance was my stance, and I I held that for a long time. I definitely held that for a long time, because my thing is like, yo, you my dad. You brought me in this world. Exactly. It doesn't matter what I said in that moment. It's not like I was telling a, I'm telling a lie. Like yeah. I literally was speaking facts. I was like, my dude, you could have done better. Like, it is what it is. But check this out, though. You know what released me from that thought? Yeah. That feeling, that animosity. You know what I'm saying? Because he's still getting my, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> <laughs> That's his job. That's his job. I, you know, I love him. I love him. But you know what released me, though? A few years ago, I never forgot my girl, Oprah. Oh. Uh. Yo, Oprah was sitting with some guests. She was sitting with who? Who she was sitting with? Tony Robbins. Oh. She had a conversation with Tony Robbins, and Oprah says something to the effect of, "Sometimes our parents are given; they're not given the blueprint of how to be a good parent." Hundred percent. Right. Right. They, they just know what they know. And sometimes we got to just give them grace. And when she said that, because Tony Robbins, he had a tumultuous relation, um, relationship with his dad as well. Yeah. His dad was abusive. Yeah. His dad was super abusive. And I think that made me see, you know what? Kamisha, don't be too hard on your father. Don't be too hard on your parents. Maybe, maybe she's right. Maybe... They were just given the tools that they were given at that time. So relieve yourself of that. And I think that thought really got me through where we are today. Like I could laugh with him. You yeah. know, we can we can vibe. So so what you said is so imperative. You need and sometimes I feel like you need those hardships, right? Because nothing's gonna be perfect. So you need kind of those things to, to just build character. And I feel like once you could laugh together break bread together, cry together, you should be able to recoup and just kind of communicate and kind of move on. But sometimes hardships like that are good. I feel like it's a horrible memory to have, but uh, you know, but, <laughs> but I'm glad he that- 
He came from my college graduation. He made it up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those memories. Yeah, definitely. So, um, talk about your your own um, fatherhood and how does that look? Like your everyday. Like, what makes you a good role mother for your your kids? And and before you answer that, I'm gonna be interviewing them next. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You need proof. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I, I'll be honest. I feel like you said it 100%. It's like there's no blueprint. You're just kind of going with it. And I feel like just the matter, you know, I have a, a young daughter. Her name is Leah. She's six. I have an older son. He's going to be 23, Michael Jr. Uh, it's a big gap, <laughs> but it's good. Uh, it's a good blessing at the end of the day. So you're very appreciative of that. And I think it's just a matter of, you know, um, just being there I, I don't like I said I don't know I, I'm hope I'm doing the best that I can and hoping that at the end of the road they can look back and say you know what he did his best with what was given you know nothing's going to be perfect but what I'm trying to do is honestly my mission now uh, as a father is to leave them better off than I was and I feel like just to keep that going as long as possible, whether it's generational wealth, because what, what what I'm doing or we're doing now could just be a stepping stone for something major down the road. But at some point, somebody has to start it. And I'll take that L to start it now. And I'm hoping to just, you know, you plant the seed so, so that later on they can live a better, more comfortable life and have something of their own, uh, you know, and not to be really dependent on anyone else for employment or things of that nature. So I'm kind of happy and thankful to kind of learn from, like I said, other people's mistakes and mishaps and even the guidance, you know, because somebody can say, hey, what's an LLC or, you know, what's a grant? And you you don't know these things, but then once you learn and you're, you're around the appropriate people, you learn how much different opportunities you, know, you can have with the good credit and things of that nature. So it plays a role. And that's why, you know, like I mentioned before, it would be good to have known more of the financial literacy part younger, but it's okay learn it now but guess what my son and my daughter are going to be fully aware of it and then giving them the option to be better off in the future so for me it's just being present trying to give the best options as possible and kind of leave for them the best that I can I love that so let's talk about that for a second parenting and your parenting was certainly such a um age gap um but most matter of fact how is that parenting with such like, you know, over a 15 year age gap. And what are the challenges? Uh, I feel like honestly, it's, it's less bonding between the two. Cause you know, if you have a sibling within, you know, two or five years, you kind of grow up, go to the same school together and things like that. So I think that's a, maybe not a one thing that didn't work out properly, but I feel like regardless at the end of the day, they still have a bond and it's kind of like a, you have an instant babysitter. So that's good. Right. So you don't have to really worry about that. <laughs> that's a plus, but, <laughs> but at least, you know, you know, uh, the kids at my daughter's school or whatever would know that uh, she has a big, big brother, you know? So I feel like uh, that's a benefit as well. But I think at the end of the day, regardless of the age gap or whatever it is, as long as they have a bond and they love and respect each other, it doesn't matter. But I think uh, it's beneficial uh, to just leave and make sure that they have a bond. And that's what I would like. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you have siblings, uh, they should be the ones that's kind of supporting you. Even though you may have your close family and friends, if you have siblings, they should be the ones supporting you because they should know the, the most of you and expect the most yeah. of you. Of course. Yeah, definitely. How is it fathering or parenting a uh, young um young lady hopefully she'll be a young lady a girl so how is it to be a girl dad and the difference between a girl dad and a boy dad how is that um i didn't really believe it until i went through it because you know you have my son first you know you play ball you know you go to games it's very easy uh but when my daughter came yes it's totally different uh sassy is a 100 the sassiness is a 100 um you know it's more of an most emotional connection and i i would say that um the maturity level is higher than you know as a boy is at the age but then maybe it's also just the the error right because the error now is not the same as you know 10 years ago 20 years ago uh so with the errors you know different error and i think also um 
yeah but it's it's challenging but i love it at the same time you know i think it did bring out more of a emotional side in me you know i can't lie because you know you kind of cater to certain things and i think even going back to the memories uh you know at random it wasn't valentine's day it wasn't whatever i bought my daughter some flowers and she was very happy and excited about that and then fast forward a month later she was like you know dad thank you for those flowers you gave me and you know like you don't think about those things it's just a random thing hey you know you deserve it you know not to not to say you don't depend on no man for anything but just saying guess what i love you and i'm this is a gesture for you but just the fact that she remembered that you know a month ago some random conversation it just builds the fact that every little thing and these memories are there so uh, but it's good the gap is good and i'm, I'm really appreciative and I'm glad because it does bring out a most a little bit of emotional side in the man, you know. So it's okay. Yeah, and I think now listening to you, I kind of now understand you a little bit better. I think that's the reason why we vibe so well. Is I didn't see, I didn't know that. I didn't know you have a daughter, but yeah. I think that's the reason why we vibe so well. And that's yo, kudos to you. Thank you. Kudos thank you. for you to yeah, and that's why I said from the top that you're so self-aware because. You you just you just roll different, and I like that. I Thank like you. that, and yeah, especially men. I like there's a post that I saw on Instagram that I like a man to just be a man. Like you ain't got to lead, you, you know, just be a man. And yo, that is so beautiful. And I think you're teaching a lot of brothers, even on this, you know, podcast on this conversation that yo, these little things matters, and we gotta pay attention. Because it's the little things yeah, it is. It that is. truly matters. If you think about the Titanic, right? Wasn't it a little iceberg? Bring down the whole people, ship. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand. Like I always be telling a lot of guys like, yo, you got to cater to your lady. And this is how you cater is the minutia, is the, the minute things that you think they're not, they're not looking at. Like look yeah, how she yeah. remember. Like, thank you, dad, for those flowers. And you're ready. You're creating that. You're setting the right intention for when she gets older, her expectation. Not saying not even about relying on, yeah. but saying this is how I deserve exactly. to be treated. 100%. You know? Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Try my best. <laughs> yes, yes. But you so so let me ask you though, do you read about parenting? Do you read about like different like books and stuff? Like you listen to audio books? How do you, how do you ensure that you are being the best parent? Like what type of tools are in your toolkit? I think in the, in the beginning stages, when uh, I had my son, I used to, you know, read books on parenting, parenting one-on-one, but I'll be honest, I don't feel like the books help that much. <laughs> I just feel like the real life experiences is just, it teaches you, you know, going through it. Cause you know, um, you, I can say I'm a baker, but unless I bake 10, 20 cakes, you're going to buy that 20th cake, you're going to understand, you know, what you did is the hands on. And I'm more of a kind of a hands on person anyway. So uh, just the, the experience going through things and just the challenges of normal life and seeing the development of them, you know, even like my son from preteen to teen and, you know, thinking he's the big man of the house and stuff. So you learn, but, you know, you keep the lines open. But for the most part, it's really just being present and going through those regular real day, everyday experiences. So I think you learn, you know, you make the best decision. And, and I also reflect on when I was younger, right? So I know like, don't, you don't have to say no to everything or just be more open-minded to things. Cause I know how it is to want to go to a party with your friend or, you know, or whatever, but just be mindful of uh, the error, the way things are and things like that, you know? Um, so I think I'm more open-minded than the older generation of parents, but enough to say, no, calm down, you know. <laughs> so, I love right. that. No, that's that's what's up, Michael. That's that's applaudable, man. I'm gonna give you a nice little award, all right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> so Michael, um, let's talk as you know, we close up this amazing conversation. Let's talk about some advice for black fathers, for younger fathers or you know, whatever. Um, what do you what is your advice? You know. Man, my heart is so heavy at times just listening to people like you and then seeing our community, you know what I'm saying? Seeing 
we're still suffering with some of the same issues that 50 years ago, 10 years ago, especially gun violence, you know, drugs and all that nonsense that we should be a little bit more prepped to, you know, handle and gauge. Like you were saying, like in your upbringing, you, you spoke about knowing that I don't want to go that path because that path is going to lead to destruction in a sense. Like there's so much of that in our communities today with gun violence and with low vibration, you know, with low vibration. So like, what is your advice for black fathers today in 2022? <laughs> I would say definitely once again, to be present, you know, I feel being present, even you may not necessarily have to, you know, give the world or have all the money, but I think just being present, it's, just, it's the little things, having a conversation. And honestly, I feel like um, even in my upbringing and even now, honestly, I, I feel like we don't talk enough. I feel like we just don't talk enough. And it, it doesn't have to be about major topics, but just, hey, you know, today when you did X, Y, Z, this is how I felt when you did that. Because you, you'd be amazed on how many my perspective, perspective, sorry, on what I thought you did or your intended is not what you intended. So a little conversation, you'd be amazed. Uh, I realize communication is key uh, for sure. And then if you just sit down and have a, a conversation and be present, you learn things about your own child that you would even know or, or what they may perspect, uh, perceive, sorry, of what you're doing. So, you know, and that can change the whole role of what's going on or your perspective on anything or, or you know, the way that you kind of handle the situation. So I feel like more talking needs to be had, whether it's in the house, outside of the house, or even just networking in general, but for sure, because, you know, like the youth today, they're making decisions based upon their little circle. Because if they don't see the light, you're not motivated to do any better or want better for yourself. You have to want better, do better, be better. So if you don't have those examples uh, or see evidence of that i feel like you're not going to have the motivation to kind of move forward and want better for yourself so i feel like for parents i would say for sure even you know the black community uh to be present be present be present and talk i think just those little things because that will evolve you know hey okay I, now i know like hey you you know you like flowers let's go to botanical garden you know like and that could just evolve to something else or even maybe to a career that she wants to go down you know because it, it totally just a conversation and being present. I feel the minimum that will evolve to other things. Yeah, absolutely. Creating, as you were talking, I was thinking maybe also creating safe spaces on the hyper local, right? Getting really hyper local and creating safe spaces for Black men, right? And also bridging those generations. Exactly. Having people like you and the younger generation of fathers, you know, right now online, I don't know if you follow current news or whatever, because we're busy, you know, but for the most part, there's this guy like this rapper, NBA young boy and blue face and yeah, a bunch yeah. of, yeah, a bunch of youngins that, that has mad kids between them and, and Nick Cannon. Yo, Nick Cannon, he gets on my nerves, son. <laughs> <laughs> he has a kid like every month. <laughs> every month. And, 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 you know, those type of conversation and those type of um, behavioral patterns, they are pushed through the algorithms because it's that stereotype. We're going to keep that alive, right? As opposed to the LeBrons, right? As opposed to the Michael Millers, right? Even my dad, upstanding men, that's doing it the right way. Yes, we all have flaws. And so creating these safe spaces on a hyper local level, whereby we can have these conversations. Yo, I'm talking to you and my mind is already like a new business opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I really, I was even, we were thinking that ourselves, like even, you know, men, honestly, we don't have a place to go and vent and just be open, you know, and I feel like it's a bad thing, but you could imagine if men now feel that way, how the, the younger kids or the younger men are gonna feel. But um, it would be good, like you said, to have place or spaces where to go and just kind of let it out, be honest and kind of flow and kind of learn from other people's mistakes and evolve from there. But yes, it would be great to have, especially for the youth, just places to see and have you know communications with people. Hey, you know, there's a way out. 
you don't necessarily have to go down that road, you know, or even having so many kids. If you could, and that's what you want, you know, so God bless you, but hopefully you're able to, you know, support them financially, mentally, and physically, right? Because if you can't do that, I don't think you should be having so many kids, but this is my opinion, but because everybody needs attention, you know. I don't know how you could give 15 kids all of your attention, but God bless you. I'll say to those right. people. <laughs> exactly. That's something that we could we should definitely look into for the new year, you know, get our elected officials involved and see if we can really create in real time, you know. Um, as we're having these conversations in real time, how can we create, you know, something, a space for young men to feel safe? and um and to bridge those generational gaps and to have you know foster those commu foster those community but also have it evolve i think with the catalyst experience and what i try to do the uh last month um well actually in october we're yeah. ready in december oh my gosh know, right? can Time you flies. imagine that? yo but like yeah creating a safe space for young men to be heard and to be seen it's so imperative all right all right michael so let's wrap this up thank you so much this was so good so good no all right give me three give us three tips going going into the new year what should parents be doing differently um especially men in terms of being a better dad right being a better role model three tips uh i would say once again <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, i know i'm sounding like a tape recorder here but be present, be present, be present. Um, that's, I would say, number one. Two uh, is to communicate. I would say overly communicate because I don't think you could, there's no way to overly, you know, overly communicate with anyone. Um, and I would just say the third is be a listener because some people don't really do that. You know, like communicating, I could sit here and talk to you all day, but if I'm not listening and actually uh, retaining what you're saying, it's, it, it's pointless. Uh, like I said, I think once you do those things, it kind of evolves. So I think it will be okay to just do that as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Ladies, I don't know about you, but I heard there's a single dad on the line. <laughs> 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 yeah, listen, I can be a matchmaker. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, no comment. Exactly. Ladies, exactly. <laughs> ladies it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Miller. Oh my I, God, you're such a. I have to shout something out. I have to say this. First, I have to say it again. Thank you again for uh, the event you had at Restoration. Uh, let me know and, and please of other events in the future because even, you know, with us, we like to give back and also, you know, to do either giveaways or back to the communities because we were even working with uh, Zab Judah, you know, the boxer. He's actually, he, he works, he works wear some of our merchandise and he likes it actually. He's actually, we're doing some kind of work with him as well. Uh, we're also in communication with Mims. I don't know if you know Mims the rapper as well. Uh, he's, you know, working on some things that he's rocking our merchandise. So like, we also believe in giving back. It's just not a matter of, hey, you know, support us, but obviously we want the support of everyone for our, our clothing line, in addition to the custom apparel that we do, but then also know that we give back and we like to give back. So we're a part of that. We also have a book out too. We actually, it's based on, uh, you see? Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Oh, nice. I saw your book too. You're not the only author here, just so you know. Hey! <laughs> that's so nice. A, so what's the title? Yeah. Uh, Leah's Fabulous Tutus. It's actually based on my daughter. We had my, my daughter, my son in there. Unfortunately, uh, their grandmother passed, but rather than having it where we have negative thoughts. We kind of want to put the love and energy into a book. So we dedicated the book to her and then kind of had it where we had the characters made of my daughter, my son, and their grandmother. So it's basically, it's my daughter um, throughout the course of a day changing into all different tutus and just going, you know, so because she wants to be a ballerina. So oh, that's yes. out on all platforms, copy. by the way, all platforms. Yes. Please send us the link. I, I love that. That's a really good gift for the holidays, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Just nice. so you know. All right, listen, okay. Ladies, you say the job. And he's smart, y'all. <laughs> try me, try right. me. Right, Michael, listen, you're such, you're such a good person to talk to and just stay connected with, so thank you. Um, thank hopefully you. Hopefully this is... 
yeah, you're welcome. This is not a one-off, man. I love your spirit. Love what you're about. Let's let's work on really changing the diaspora. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. Yeah, facts. Michael Miller, CEO and founder of Numbari. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for availing yourself to this incredible conversation. I know you also have a little gift for our amazing listeners. So please yes, go yes. Ahead and so what we're going to do is um, whenever this airs, uh, the first five people that follow us on IG and DM us, EBK, right? You're going to get a $50 chop coupon. It up. It. Exactly. Chop it up. Chop it up. Are you like that? We do chop it up? You do like chop that. it up. Okay. So the first five people that follow us and DM us, chop it up, we're going to send you a $50 code to use on our site wow that's what's up man thank you oh i love all that right. all right so y'all heard him yes yes and we're going to put all of his information um in the bio so make sure you guys as you're listening the first five listeners right make sure you dm nambari and uh, spell that for us n-a-m-b-a-r-i-i -I, nambari DM him, make sure you follow, make sure you tell your friends to follow, and you can just put in the keywords, chop it up, and you will get a $50 gift card. That's amazing. You guys, he has incredible apparel. You heard all the different influencers that he's working with, and obviously supporting another Black-owned business that is doing it the right way. Thank you. So thank make you. sure, yes, make sure you guys uh, follow and dm and uh yeah so make sure because I, I really just to clarify it's nambari with the underscore because there was another person that had it so we have a little job so make sure you'll see our symbol and everything so it's nambari with an underscore dm perfect thank you and you guys we also have three exclusive because we're in a given mood and it is the hey. holiday hey so we <laughs> have three exclusive we're going to be giving away three exclusive uber eats gift cards all right, so three lucky listeners will get um, um, access to Uber Eats gift cards. So nice. make sure y'all DM us on the Chop It Up platform. And of course, with Michael, you can also DM us as well on the Chop It Up pa platform, and we will extend grace to you. But make sure you follow him as well. All right, listen, this is such a beautiful episode. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank as you. We close, yes, thank you. As we close up, any last words? um just to say thank you to um all the supporters families and friends honestly um other entrepreneurs like yourself and i feel like we're in a good network you know like um and i think it's good with the circles that we're building uh just to say thank you happy holidays to everybody and let's support each other because we all need each other yes 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 on that note thank you so much for listening to the chop it up podcast thank you all for rocking with us for the entire year you guys, thank you so much. Happy holidays. And Michael, happy holidays to you and Thanks, your family. Thanks, same to you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.